I want to go ahead and, and let you know that I've been reading some headlines. Like many of you, uh, we're coming to the close of 2021, and so 2022 is around the corner, and already you can gather some headlines about trends that are going to be happening in 2022. People who are prognosticators are already thinking about what's next inside of this COVID situation for our world, what's next with regards to trends, what's next in the future for us. And uh, I want to tell you too that as I read some of those situations, it's not all, uh, it's not all good news. Uh, sometimes it's, it's bad news. And, and when I read that, or when I have a chance to go ahead and hear bad news, I have a tendency to go ahead and immediately think, well, gosh, I just hope that's not true. I just hope it's not true. Uh, that's true inside of the life of our church family. Whenever we hear news about individuals who are going through difficult times, uh, we have a tendency to go ahead and want to hope that that is just not true. And so, uh, I don't know if you are like me, but, uh, well, let, let's just go ahead and, and, for instance, take a look at some, some headlines, maybe, inside of 2022. Uh, Netflix is raising the monthly subscription rate, and you're thinking, gosh, I, I just hope that that's not good news, right? Uh, that's hope that's not true. Or maybe let's try this one, uh, that Amazon is no longer uh, shipping anything else but books, right? And so, that means you're going to have to go to the mall again. And uh, you just hope that's not true. Uh, you know, the opposite is also true for me. I found that when I hear good news, I hope it's not true. But when I hear, when I hear bad news, I hope it's not true. But when I hear good news, I hope it is true. When I hear good news, I hope it is true. And then you kind of lean in a little bit thinking that maybe this really is true. When I hear good news, I hope that it's true. For instance, this headline. <clears throat> Eat more processed sugar and you're going to live longer. You know, give me another Christmas cookie and another handful of gummy bears, right? Uh, that's good. Uh, I made that up, by the way. Uh, so, uh, when I hear good news, I hope that it's true. When I hear bad news, I hope that it's not true. I don't know if I can go ahead and, and make an audacious claim that that's kind of part of the human condition, that all of us respond that way. I, I don't want to presume that's the case, but I suspect perhaps there are a few more people like me uh, that when you hear bad news, you hope it's not true, or when you hear good news, you hope that it is true. And when you hear good news and you hope that it's true, you want to kind of lean in because you want to be part of something that might be good. Did you know that at the very first pronouncement, before Jesus had ever done anything miraculous, before Jesus had ever spoke a word, before Jesus had any ever walked on water or healed people who were dead and called them back to life, before any of that, the proclamation was good news. Was good news. I don't know if you're like me, but when I hear good news, I like to kind of hope that it's true. I want to lean in. Not only was the pronouncement good news, but also there is an unending source of joy that's not rooted upon our circumstances. Before Jesus had ever participated in public ministry, the announcement, I've got Good news. It will bring great joy. And do you know the next line of the pronouncement? This is what is astounding to me. It's not just for 
Mary and Joseph, the parents of baby Jesus. It's not just for the shepherds who heard the announcement. It's not just for a group of people who had been waiting for a Messiah. It was for all people. For all people. I don't know if you're like me this evening, but when I hear good news, I hope that it's true. And I want to lean in. And this evening, the proclamation about the birth of Jesus Christ is that it makes little difference what age or station you are. It makes little difference about your church background and your church history. It makes little difference. This is good news of great joy for all of us. And I invite you, lean in. If you've never placed your faith and confidence in Christ, hope that it's true. Good news of great joy for all people. And I guess the question I have for you this Christmas is this. Is it for you? Is it? When they began to go ahead and think about how they were going to tell the story about Bethlehem, how they were going to tell the story about Jesus, how they were going to tell the story about his miracles, his life, his death, the resurrection, when they began to think about how they were going to tell the story, they called the story the gospel. The gospel. Now, the interesting thing about this is when they thought about this is the story we're going to tell about Jesus, before anything was ever written down, it was called the gospel. And you know what gospel means? It means it's a good story. It's a good story. And you know, I don't know if you're like me or not, But when I hear good news, I hope that it's true. I hope it's true. The original word of the Greek language that was used is the word euangelion. You can see that the word angels kind of sandwiched in there. And that's because it's about other people telling other people good news and that's what the angels did I have good news for you of great joy for all people I don't know what it is about the Christmas story that is so intriguing whether people come to church or whether they don't come to church it's enough that you know Charlie Brown's Christmas continues to be one of the most watched specials Uh, Not because it's just tradition, but because I think it all kind of climaxes with Linus standing on the platform once again and telling the story about the birth of Jesus Christ. Or maybe it has something to do with the fact that it makes little difference about where you go during these weeks leading up to Christmas. You actually can hear some portion of the gospel story being played even inside of places where we shop because of the Christmas carols. I don't know if it's the sentimentality or if it's the incongruity of the story. Things that you would never, ever, ever expect to be put together. A holy God, spotless and pure, laying in a stable with animals around and manure in the air. The incongruities. How it is. That one whose birth is without question the most famous birth of all humanity. Yet it's wrapped up in this scandal of a young girl who is pregnant out of wedlock. It just doesn't seem to go together. But it's good news. Great joy for you. And for me this evening, 
When I hear good news, I hope that it's true. When I hear good news, I want to lean in. Let's just take a couple of minutes this evening and, and look at a couple of these incongruities about how it is that this story that we read, by the way, fellas, nice job, I think we won. Uh, how we did uh, as far as that, uh, uh, the story we read out of Luke chapter 2. I want you to notice, if you will, how Luke presents the story. Right out of the beginning, in the first verse, it says this. In those days, Caesar Augustus. Now, this sets the stage for the entire story. Everyone is going to go ahead and lean in because of Caesar Augustus' authority, of his power. But notice how the story is structured. Caesar Augustus, he issued a decree that a census would be taken. Caesar Augustus, he's at the top of the food chain, if you will. He's at the top of the political ladder. He's at the top of the power structure. He's at the top of the Roman world. Caesar Augustus. And underneath Caesar Augustus, then, we read about Quirinius. He's the governor, right below Caesar Augustus. And then, Luke introduces us to the next person in the story. His name is Joseph. He's got to be below Quirinius because he doesn't have any political power. But Joseph does have a lineage. He's from the house of David. He has royal blood that's flowing through his veins. And David is just below Quirinius. And then you have Mary. And you do know that culturally that Mary might have done all of the heavy lifting in the birth of Jesus, but according to the culture, she was of less importance than Joseph. Notice what happens. Caesar, Quirinius, Joseph, Mary, baby Jesus. I think Luke tells us the story without actually saying the words that it makes no difference what status you have. It makes no difference what rung you are on the ladder. It makes no difference about where you are that Christ has come for all people. So much so that the Apostle Paul in the second chapter of Philippians says this, He climbed down the ladder and emptied himself. I doubt that Quirinius knew that Jesus was born. I doubt that Caesar knew that Jesus was born. I don't know that they even cared. But the angel said, I have good news. Great joy. All people. One other interesting thing that is cliche, I think, if you've been coming to church for a really long time, or maybe if you're just new to faith, you've heard this referenced around the Christmas story. Notice, if you will, that when Mary and Joseph, they get to Bethlehem, there's not any place for them. As a matter of fact, you know, you have heard that, that there's no room for them inside of where they were staying. They, they didn't have any place to stay for Jesus to be born. Luke says it this way, that while they were there, a time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to a firstborn son, wrapped him in cloths, and placed him in a manger. There was no room. I don't think that Caesar would have made room for a poor peasant couple to have a baby. I know that Quirinius wouldn't have made room the people in the community right around Joseph and Mary, they should have made room. We even sometimes like to vilify the innkeeper, whoever that might be, and say shame on him for not making room. And then when we gather together in a service like this, and we light our candle and we stand, we say, you know, I make room. Do we make room? I know it's cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. 
There was no room for Jesus. I wonder if I took your calendar from 2021 and I had a chance to run down your day log, have you made room? Or let's go from preaching into meddling. If I opened up your checkbook, have you made room? Oh, I make room. Especially when we're holding the candle and we light the candle. Be born in my heart today. Is there room? One last observation I think that Luke is trying to communicate in this narrative about the birth of Jesus. When the shepherds, they were out in the field, the angel of the Lord appeared to them and they were terrified. And the angel said to them, don't be afraid, I bring you Here it is. It's good news. It's good news. Great joy. For who? All people. Today, today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He's the Messiah. He's the Lord. You do know that shepherds, uh, they were in the lowest social strata. They were down here. As a matter of fact, You might not know this, but shepherds were so untrustworthy, they could never be called to be a witness in a court of law because they never told the truth. And so shepherds were not invited to come and and be a public witness in a court of law. They were unable to do that. They didn't have that right because they were untrustworthy. It's interesting that of all the people, the announcement came... The announcement didn't come to Caesar Augustus. I would have written that. That's how I would have written that story. Look, just tell Caesar. No, no. Quirinius isn't part of that narrative. The angels didn't say, I've got good news, Quirinius. There's nowhere in the story that you even read that Joseph and Mary heard the pronouncement. But the shepherds hear the pronouncement. I wonder if Luke is certainly implying to you and to me that, again, that Christ has come into the world for all people. Real quickly, notice the response. Again, this is before Jesus ever was involved in public ministry. This is before Jesus ever did anything miraculous. This is before Jesus ever did anything that made people just wonder who he was. He was an infant lying in a manger. And notice the response. When they saw him, they told other people. Because after all, it's good news. And it prompted great joy concerning what they had told them for this child. And all who heard the news... They were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary, she was trying to work all this situation out inside of her life. She held on to that information. She was turning it over, pondering that inside of her heart. And the shepherds, well, they were just glorifying God. Because after all, this is good news. And when you hear good news, you hope that it's true. And so the pronouncement this evening, before we have a chance to stand and affirm our faith by lighting our candles, again, just these few words. I have good news. And tonight, you might have placed your faith and confidence in Christ, and you know that it's been good news. Your life has been transformed. But this evening, if you're still trying to work out this whole Christmas story about what this means for you, and you're here because it was an obligation, because your family made you come, I just want to say to you, if it's good news, maybe it's true. And when I hear good news, I hope that it's true. 
great joy for you, for me, for all of us. Will you pray with me? Lord, in these next moments, as we come to the climactic ending, where we have a chance to respond by affirming our faith and lighting a candle, may Christmas 2021 be good news for us. And might we find ourselves in that group of individuals, all people, as we sing these familiar words about a holy night, we pray that a holy God will speak to our hearts and that these moments might be moments of decision and moments of assurance of what you've done in the world and what you've done in our worlds. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask Selena if she'll come and Kathy, if they're going to lead us in uh, Oh Holy Night. Uh, you now are going to need your candle, okay? So if you don't have one, I'd like to invite you to go and grab one. Now would be the time. Uh, ushers are helping us with that. <clears throat> and then we're going to have the ushers come to the front uh, once again, and, and we're going to go ahead and, and pass the flame all around the auditorium. Just remain in your seats. At the end of seeing Oh Holy Night, uh, we'll go ahead and, and close our service this evening uh, with a verse of, silent night. And so I'd like to invite uh, Chris and Dawn, their families, uh, to come back to the platform this evening. And we want to go ahead and invite everybody to come back here if you would. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to make my way over here. Again, the reason why we light this center candle is it's a reminder. If Jesus is the light of the world, he invites us then to be people who are also people of light. And let's go ahead then and, and drop those lights down if we could. Pass that back if you will. Honey. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and never pining till he appeared in the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voice
all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus praise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the lord oh praise his name forever his to invite you to uh, stand with us if you will and that is an affirmation of our faith let's just close with that uh, one verse of silent night holy night all is calm all is bright let's sing together silent night holy joy for all people. That's what we celebrate tonight. We're so glad that you were here. Sharptown staff wants to wish you a Merry Christmas. Have a super blessed day tomorrow. We're just a few hours away from the moment that our Savior was born. You can extinguish your candles. Let's pray one more time together as we send you out. Dear Heavenly Father, send us forth this evening absolutely convinced of this good news of great joy. We say for all people, may we know individually it's for each one of us. Oh, may it make a difference in our lives. But I pray that you would bless those who are here tonight from the top of their head to the tip of their toes. Lord, it's been good to be with you, God Emmanuel, to be here in your presence. Once again, Jesus, we say we love you, we worship you, we thank you for the gifts that you give us. In your precious name we pray. Amen.